Hello there, my name is Adam Wokter and in this video we're going to look on how to fight properly as an Amargosaurus. Now, I remember last time I covered this creature, I wasn't too impressed. However, it's been some time since that video and since that video, the Amargosaurus has gone through a few updates and I can assure you, its combat potential has most certainly increased. In this video, we'll be going over the following topics. Also, one more thing, my time with this creature are limited, so if you have any tips of your own, share them down below. Not too much to cover, but for head abilities, we have one option. A quick headbutt attack that also deals bleed along with medium damage. For sense abilities, we have two options, the first one being Lone Survivor. This increases your armor and maneuverability if you're an introvert. The second option is Sturdy, that basically makes you immune from being yeeted off cliffs. For front limb, you have one option. Basically, you putting your foot down. Careful though, somebody might die if you show that much authority. For high, we are yet again just one option. Resilient scale that increases your healing for bleed and venom. And for last, we have tail. That just had a normal tail attack. Though, even though it says causes light damage, it doesn't mention the knockback it does. Regardless of the description not being all there, let's just have the players discover that on their own. As for what you should be rocking with, well, we don't really have many choices to choose from, and between Lone Survivor and Sturdy is pretty much a no-brainer. If you do play in a pack though, shift from Lone Survivor to Sturdy, however, in this video, we'll be focusing on solo play. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose from, I recommend the extra attack knockback subspecies. This is due to the main fighting style of the Amargosaurus, which I will talk about in a few seconds. If I had to be specific, I would recommend knockback for mid tiers, extra bleed for high tiers, extra armor for low tiers, but the extra knockback subspecies are pretty all rounder. When it comes to terrain compatibility, large open areas works just fine, but depending on what you're fighting and how many, a more dense area works just as well. If you're fighting against low tiers, then the terrain can limit their movement. Of course, you just gotta make sure that you don't get stuck in the environment yourself. If you are fighting against an apex or even a mid tier for that matter, then that could be a death sentence. I'll just come out and say it right now. You don't really have much to fear against this solo low tier. The spikes on the Amarga aren't just for show, and any pouncer will be in a world of pain if they were to pounce. There's a reason why the Amarga doesn't have any slippery scales, it's because they have already built-in defenses, which can actually be quite lethal if not careful. Case in point, any lone pouncers aren't really too much to be scared of. Even higher classes of low tier sound much to fear of. Of course, you are required to be able to predict their movement, as they are rather fast. Regardless of speed, it is still a low tier were to say mid tier herbivore, so taking your attack directly can be rather devastating. Unlike the other tiers, Against a solo low tier, or even a few of them, you don't have too much to fear. Even if you want to run, it's not like you can outspeed them, so just take a defensive stand and let them run into your attack. The next tier requires the complete opposite approach. Apexes. If one were to look at the stats, one would think that the best course of action would be to run away. But actually, what is needed here is a head-to-head -head clash, but not in the same way that we are used to. If you don't understand, let me try to explain it like this. Okay guys, I know that the stats are against us and we have very low chances of winning, but just hear me out and try to follow me here. I have a plan. You see, when they attack, we run away. Okay, out with it, where did you steal that brilliant idea? That's right, a head-to-head -head clash while you're running away. You see, when anyone attacks you, they will receive some damage and a ton of bleed, which will, by the way, stack the more they attack you. If I had to categorize this, then the Amarcosaurus is a semi-brawler running away bleeder. 
Basically, you have to allow them to attack you so they will receive some bleed, which you by the way can help adding on to by headbutting them. Of course, if they have any charge attack or any other attack that can prove lethal, then you use the knockback on your tail to keep them at a distance. Also, make sure that you're always on the run. The bleed effect from you will be at its most powerful if you can keep them running. If you decide to be the attacker, then they will most likely resume a defensive stab. If you're going to fight Apexes, avoid at all costs to be the aggressor. If they take the defensive stance, you will nerf your bleeding potential. Leave me alone! Hit me! Fight me! Give me a hug! You have better stamina than the Apexes. But if you do not utilize this along with proper use of your abilities, then you are putting yourself at a major disadvantage. Even if you play to the best of your abilities, the odds of winning are 50 50 at best. Unless you're a really good and experienced Amarcosaurus player. And if you are, why are you watching this video? Do you really need my help? In any case, I'll just say it again. Do not be the aggressor if you insist on fighting in Apex. They will have higher chance of winning due to their superior stats and you are just nerfing your own bleeding capabilities. Now, I haven't really talked much about the knockback ability, but if used correctly and in the right circumstances, then it can be quite OP. But chances of this happening are very low, so let's just look at what you're supposed to do. Like I said before, if the enemies decide to attack, you run away. If they are using any dangerous looking attack, use your tail to keep them away. The knockback ability can knock them back quite a bit. You're going to have to allow a few attacks from them, however it will work out for you. Remember that the more they attack, the more bleed they will receive, and you have more stamina than them. So as long as you make it a battle of attrition while also running away, you should be good. If you keep them running at max speed for a longer period of time, I will assure you, the bleed will work its wonder. After some time, there are two things that can happen. They can stop hunting you due to blood loss or stamina loss, or they can continue a fruitless hunt. If they choose the second option, then they will probably just run themselves to death, and no players are that stupid. I hope. If they choose the first option, then it's kinda up to you what to do. You can either double back, go back and hope that they are weakened enough for you to take them out, or you can just run away and your survival will be guaranteed. In my opinion, with this method, and because of the speed and stamina limitation of the apexes, it is kinda easier for me to deal with them compared to mid-tiers. If you utilize the same method against any mid-tiers, then you will win most 1v1s. That's why to make it fair, let's make it a 1v pack. Even though they are more fragile compared to apexes, they are faster and have more stamina, so it will be more challenging to win in a battle of attrition. You also won't be able to outspeed them. The best shot is to drag it out as much as you can, and to land heavy blows when you can.
You can outlast and outspeed Apexes. You can't do that with mid tiers. If they come at you in packs, then it will be a most difficult battle. This is also why you should do that yourself. If you want to rack up kills without having to worry too much about your own skin, then just team up with people. So to sum it all up, against low tiers, just take a defensive stand, it's not like you're going to outspeed them anyways. For mid tiers and high tiers, if they decide to attack, then you must run away. You attack enough to take a few bites in, so you can allow that. Just make sure that they are bleeding. And also that they are moving at top speed. Do not be the aggressor, do not let them be the one to take the defensive stance. If you found this video helpful, please show your support to the channel. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Adios! Why are you running?